Hey friends, and welcome to our last week in our series, Ever After, where we have been having some fairy tale fun with the story of Ruth this month. And I'm excited to share with you how the story ends, because guess what? In the beginning, Ruth had lost everything. She had felt hopeless. But we learned that God gives us companion, God gives us hope, and God gives us boldness to act on his love and his mercy and the plan that he set before us. So when people achieve their dreams, because do you want to hint what this week's about? Well, it's a happy ever, happily ever after, which is one of my favorite ways to end a story. And people say that when we achieve our dreams, we're filled with so much happiness that it feels like fireworks are going off or butterflies in our stomach. We have this joy that bubbles out from in to out. So I love fireworks. You know I love Disney. So I have a little video of fireworks I want you to enjoy before we move on to our worship.
Jesus does me this, I know. All the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. This I know when I say yes. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes. Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin, let his little child come and sing. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes. Jesus loves me, yes. Jesus loves me, this I know when I say yes. Jesus loves me, yes. Jesus loves me, yes. Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Every now and then, when you feel like you are on your own, sing this song and remember you are never all alone. Cause Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me, yes. Jesus loves me, yes. Jesus loves me, this I know. Yes. Jesus loves me, yes. Jesus loves me, yes. Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Yes. Jesus loves me, yes. Jesus loves me, yes. Jesus loves me, this I know. Now, many of our favorite fairy tales end in a happily ever after, where they've um, achieved this great task, or they've slayed the dragon, and they get to live happily now, whatever that looks like. But a lot of times it ends in a wedding, and that's exactly how our story ends as well today. But if you were in charge of a fairy tale wedding, what would it look like? You know, an indoor ceremony, an outdoor ceremony, lots of food, lots of music, lots of dancing, sparklers, fireworks. What do you think? Where would it take place? What kind of gift would you bring? What would be the decoration you would have at every table? And what would the cake look like? That's probably one of the most important questions. Perhaps this is not the fairy tale wedding that most people think of, the one we're going to talk about today between Ruth and someone else. Especially fairy tale characters would dream about because this one's a little unusual. We're going to find out today that it's important to celebrate our happy endings as endings are often the beginning of something new. Let's go grab our Bibles and see what's happening with Boaz and Ruth. Well, as we read our Bible stories this month, we've had a little spin on them. We've illustrated them. We've taken notes to like a scribe about them. So we've acted them out with some characters. But today I'm going to read it to you like a story. So welcome back to um, Storybook Fairy Tale Forest Friends, and we're going to be wrapping up the story of Ruth. In the last chapter, we learned that Ruth had asked Boaz to help her family by becoming her guardian redeemer or her kinship redeemer. You'll remember that the redeemer's job was to be the person who would take over Naomi's family and marry Ruth. 
Boaz very much wanted to marry Ruth and become the kinsman redeemer, but there was a little problem. There was actually someone who was first in line before Boaz to be the redeemer, but Boaz had a plan. And this is a little how the conversation once went. Once upon a time, Boaz stood to the side and thought, Psst, I'm going to go meet with this other redeemer and I'm going to need some witnesses. Hey, could you be the witness? Great. Okay. Ready? So the other relative walks in and says, Hey, Boaz, what's so urgent? And what are they all doing here? Well, Boaz says, Oh, don't mind them. Come over here, my friend. Have this seat. Okay. Here's the deal. You, you know Naomi, right? The relative answers, Yeah, she came back from Moab not too long ago. Correct? Yes. Boaz answered. So she's selling this piece of land that used to belong to her husband? Oh, the relative answered. Elimelech's land? I love saying Elimelech. That's a nice piece of property. Boaz, shrugging. Well, it's all right, I guess. Well, you see, um, you're next in line to redeem it if you want. But if you don't, well, uh, I guess I can take it. Well, the relative thought about it. No, 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 no. I, I want it. I'll redeem her. Oh, maybe I'll build my summer home there. Boaz quickly jumped in and said, oh, 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 okay, cool. So that, um, that means you're also marrying Naomi's daughter-in-law, Ruth. Congrats. You know, you know. Congratulations. Happy wedding. Well, the relative looked confused and answered, come again? Boaz quickly jumped in and said, oh, you know, the land will be yours, but you'll actually be carrying on Ella Malak's family line with Ruth. And that sure sounds like a lot of responsibility, but um, good luck. Well, the relative was starting to get a little nervous and a little alarmed and said, whoa, 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 I didn't sign up for that. I have my own family to think about. No, thank you. You, you can have it. Good luck. So Boaz, guess what? He was so excited. And he answered to his saw that, right? I got it. I got the land. And that's how we settle these matters around here. He gave me his shoe and that's the end of it. It's as good as a signature. And I get to marry Ruth. And <laughs> that's the end of our story. And that's pretty much how it happened. Boaz redeemed Naomi's land and he married Ruth. Now Naomi, who had started out this journey, was so much saddened. Remember, she lost her family. She was now filled with so much joy. Remember those fireworks earlier? Just exploding with happiness. And everyone accepted Ruth to be part of their community. And they prayed that God would bless them. And God indeed did. And Ruth and Boaz, and they lived happily ever after. Now Ruth and Boaz had a son named Obed. And Obed later on had a son of his own named Jesse. And when Jesse was older, he had many sons. And among them, there was a shepherd boy named and as you might know, that little shepherd boy would actually become the king of Israel. Isn't that an amazing story? And today we're learning that God always takes care of us, even when we feel hopeless, sad, alone, and broken down and shy. God gives us all the things we need, and he takes care of us. I love a happily ever after, and I'm so glad that's how our story ended today, in knowing that God takes care of us when we're sad, alone, hopeless, and shy. God gives us all the things that we need. God is going to take care of us forever. Now, if you could have someone on earth take care of something for you forever, what would it be? They could do this chore for you where it would be taken care of and you wouldn't have to worry about it, okay? Would you have them take care of a pet, a plant? going to school for you, brushing your teeth. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot, but sometimes it's hard to just stand there and brush them for so long. What about providing meals for you or picking up your clothes, doing your chores? Those are some good options, but do you have a different one that you're thinking of that you would love if someone could do that for you forever and you wouldn't have to worry about it ever again? Now, almost every fairy tale ends with a happily ever after for the main characters. So did ours today, which was awesome. Now imagine something terrible happened and every fairy tale character's happy endings were taken away. What are some other ways that their stories might have ended instead? We were very happy for Ruth this week that her story did end in a happily ever after. But if you had stopped the story where she had lost her family and lost her town, it would have seemed like a pretty sad ending. Thankfully, it wasn't. 
Just like our happily ever after isn't the end of the story because it's often the beginning of a new adventure. When we're in that sad place where we feel broken, alone, and beaten down, that's not the end of our story either because God takes care of us. Our lives are not like fairy tales. Hopefully you don't live in a magical enchanted forest. And if you do, could you give me a call? I'd love to visit. Woodland creatures aren't talking to us, sadly. <laughs> there are no super villains with superpowers, thankfully. And things don't turn out perfectly every time. Also, there are no animal creators cooking dinner for us or sewing us dresses. And I find that a, just a very sad fact. But no matter what we're facing, even if our lives don't feel like we're at the happily ever after part, God is always with us, and God always takes care of us. Do you know how I know this? Well, it comes right from our Bible, and it's in Psalm 121, 8. In fact, this might sound a little familiar. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Psalm 121, 8. In fact, it's our memory verse for this whole month where we've been practicing that the Lord will watch over your coming and going both, oh no, I froze, both now and forevermore. Did I get it? Okay, hang on, let's slow it down, do it again. The Lord will watch over, I'm gonna cheat. Oh, you're coming and going both now and forevermore. See, even I needed to keep practicing our memory verse for the whole month. And guess what? That's it. We're wrapping it up. And you get a sneak peek of our new series after we finish with the prayer. Will you join me? Heavenly Father, I thank you for the reminder of Ruth and her happily ever after, Lord, when she follows your plan for her life, that she puts her hope and faith and trust in you. Help me to do the same as Ruth did, to obey your commandments and to follow in your Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to worship and praise together, that we can learn more and grow closer to you, that I can grow closer with these families, Lord, as we worship and pray. And I ask that you give us the boldness and the courage and the hope it takes to live a life for you. I ask that you bless these children and their families, Lord, and I thank you for this facility that's provided for us, Lord, that we can meet and worship so freely, Lord. And I just pass out this hope for this future, for our community, and for our church, Lord, that we can shine brightly in the darkness. In your holy and precious name, I pray. Amen. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. It was very hot this last week, so I'm looking forward to some time to cool off and have a little fun. And next Sunday, July 3rd, we will not have a video because we are all meeting in the Family Life Center for a time of worship and praise and celebration. And I hope you can join us. And if not, I will see you the following week here on our Facebook and YouTube pages. I hope you guys have a great week. Bye-bye.